Hello everybody, this is Anthony Beyond, it's my Mission Star Podcast. It has been a while, but we have another episode of The Conover. By the time you're listening to this, it is 2016. It is January 1st, uh, which is Happy New Year. And um, <laughs> hopefully, the, the, the for those who are listening to us who are, does not have a huge hangover, um, today <laughs> I'm bringing in... Um, Oh man, I forgot your name already. <laughs> Chris. Chris. So Chris is joining us. The what? The Chris from the East Coast, not my brother, but um, he's joining us to talk about everything, anywave, and Crystal Coast Con. Um, so, uh, do you want to start with Crystal Coast Con first, or do you want to do anywave? Uh, Crystal Coast Con first. Right. That way, I, I, it, the memory's still fresh, and I don't want to keep digging. <laughs> Gotcha. All right. So, uh, Chris the Coast Con, what was different this year than last year? Oh, well, what, the sci-fi theme was bigger. I, this year, I took my um, my friends, two of my friends, along with me, and my one of my nephews. My kid nephew, he's about eight. Yeah, and this and Chris the Coast Con takes place in New, in October. I see. Was this like during like around Christmas, uh, not Christmas, uh, around Halloween time or? Yeah. Uh, like okay. two weeks before, a week or two before Halloween. Gotcha. Oh, okay. All right. That's cool. Um, okay. Cool. Um, so go on about what, what was different about uh, this year than it was last year. Um, well, since the new Star Wars movie was coming out, we saw a whole... A lot of Star Wars uh, references. Mm-hmm. Because um, because if you if since the gallery's been up, some of you have probably noticed a large Darth Vader in one of them. Yeah. <laughs> when you walk in, that's what it, you you will spot that very quickly. Mm-hmm. Because um, Mac Daddy's where Crystal Coast Con is being is, has been being held is um. A bar and a bowling alley too, mm. with a miniature golf course and um and, and what do you want to call it a go kart arena. Oh, nice! Out, on the outside, so when you walk in, you see the arcades and where the dark, giant dark, where the large Darth Vader was. You saw it. <laughs> <laughs> That's really cool. Yeah. It awesome. was cool. Yes, and along with that. You also had um, some of the um, horror thing too, being the time of the year it was. It's being held, such as um, this, the guys from the Nightmare Factory and um, Havelock, North Carolina. I want to say Havelock, North Carolina. They um, they could usually come as zombies. Mm-hmm. My nephew kept chasing after them for some reason. <laughs> yeah, we have been trying to explain to him that you don't run to the zombies. <laughs> Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's something you don't do. <laughs> I mean, running after the superheroes were fine, especially, um, the superhero, um, cosplayer group. Mm-hmm. They, um, kind of like the Ghostbusters from last year, they go out into events as, um, heroes. Mm-hmm. You probably saw them as, um, Superman and Captain America and Spider-Man together, or Batman with Spider-Man and Wonder Woman in the gallery. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, they go out and basically more so, I believe, more so for charity. Mm. Um, going along with the sci-fi slash horror theme, you had, um, I want to say Michael Bain. Cool. I believe I'm saying his last name right. He's the, some of you might remember him as the dad from the first Terminator movie. Oh right, right, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. And he's from, and he was an alien, you know, one of the main characters from Alien. Cool, sick. Yeah, yeah. Um, my friend, he says that's one some of his favorite movies, particularly the first Terminator. He, he had a moment. He had a moment. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. What what kind of moment was this? Was he like just like head over heels, like over the cosplay, just like oh my god, your costume was awesome. No, no, no. We had the actual actor there, so. Oh shit! Oh okay. So it's like, oh snap! It's really him. 
I mean, he kept his he for the most part he kept his composure, but he did geek out. So <laughs> I hear it. I hear it. That's cool. That's pretty awesome. And then um, let's see. They had a tagging tournament and a Mortal Kombat. No, there was supposed to be a tagging tournament. Call it the new Call of Duty tournament there, and I want to say Mortal Kombat as well. Um, then that was in the bar area near the, uh, near where they had the other side of the bowling green. Right. And next to them was, uh, the, t the Star Wars fan group and the Star Trek fan group. One being the f 105th, the, f the 501st Legion. Ah, uh, yes. And the Star Trek uh, group next to him for the North Carolina chapter was on the opposite side. And he also had the Pro Wrestling Federation guys there. One of their champions was representing their group. Sick. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, shout out to the Behind Your First. Um, I know they're pretty big. Uh, I know there's a, there's a big Behind Your First um, Star Wars uh, group out here in California. Uh, I mean, they're generally all over the U.S. and, and elsewhere, but, um, yeah, shout out to those guys for sure. Yeah, they were, yeah, they were running deep. They had awesome, um, they, their, their costumes were awesome, too, so. And then we had a dad that did, um, for the, for the cost for the costume contest for the kids. Mm -hmm. Now, the dad, he was in the Samurai Darth Vader outfit. Sick. Oh yeah, it was awesome. But his daughter and the next door neighbor kid, he designed their costumes too. His daughter, I believe, was the was the mini predator. <laughs> nice. And the neighbor girl, her friend, was a mini um Cyberman from oh. Doctor Who. Oh, okay, cool, awesome. I'm not, yeah. I, I I don't want to say I'm, I'm not mistaken, but there was a picture that was floating around the internet. It might be the same one. Where uh, the girl is dressed up as Mini Predator, um, it was like little girl, has to be at least like you know five or or six, um, but it was like the description was like some girls want to be princesses, but some don't or some along those lines. So, um, yeah, that that's pretty cool. That's pretty awesome. So yeah, <laughs> that's really sick. <laughs> it was so adorable seeing her come out. For the contest, for the before the judges, and it's like you guys have to give it to them. <laughs> you have to. I mean, if you just turn the corner and saw that saw her standing there dressed like that, you would freeze. I'm like, hold up, wait, hold, wait, they come that size now? No. <laughs> yeah, the 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 uh, what's what we're looking for? The magic of cosplay. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's imp it's impressive of what I've seen some people do with it, and <laughs> some of it they just outdo themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. I it, it never ceases to amaze me. I mean, you know, cosplaying for a while and seeing other cosplayers like how they pretty much make the same costume but with different materials is always. Uh, a, a wonder to to look at. It's really cool to see. Um, and you know, it, it never restricts you know age limits as far as like you know how old you have to be to keep cosplaying. It never is. Really so um, that's cool. I, I like that. I, I like. I definitely like when, when little kids cosplay. I think that's the best. Mhm. Mm and then another thing that caught my attention was um Dragon Air. Um, it's a little. Uh, how to explain? Because uh, I'm uh, when I this is my first time I actually encountered something similar to LARPing. Uh -huh. Um, but the thing is, they use Nerf weapons or padded weapons, and basically it's it's um designed to where you can set up a team of of your friends or whatever and have a battle. Right. And using each, you have a. Uh, like that. I want to say, um, a weapon that matches the sword, and another one that matches a lance, and a shield. And depending on the, from what I understand how the rules work, you can, if you hit an arm, 
that arm can no longer be used, or and if your leg goes, then you're considered dead. Mm-hmm. Or if you get hit in the head, that's an instant. Right, right. And I did a whole section in the gallery of the of the of the battle I was watching out on outside. Mm-hmm. So that it was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. And LARPing is a very very interesting uh, hobby, and I've and I've seen some documentary videos about it. Um, it's very interesting. Um, and it's pretty cool too as well. So. Yeah, it, it is a very interesting beast on its own. But yeah, that's cool. That's pretty awesome. Then, um, let's see. The other guests that were there, we had, um, uh, people from, we had more characters from The Walking Dead. Um, let's see, Jack Stryfer from the original Battlestar Galactica. Sick. Three of the Red Ranger, the Blue Ranger, and the Pink Ranger from time, from Power Rangers Time Force. Oh, awesome. Um, we had Bill Blair, who was one of the main actors for, um, alien actors from Star Trek. And I got him in the gallery as, um, as when he went on to don the whole Klingon makeup. Oh, and, nice. That's awesome. Yeah, he did a whole panel about how, what it's like to go through a whole on the set and you have to go through the makeup and get it having to put on. Mm, awesome. Um, we had, and we also had Tim Russ. Um, he was um, Commander Trebuck from Star Trek Voyager. Mm. Yeah, we had, we had a bunch of people here. <laughs> Damn. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. But then, um, the co- the cosplayers were great. We had a Goku and a Freezer running around. Um, matter of fact, the Goku was with the, it was actually um getting ready to try out with the Larpers. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> and we had a couple of Attack on Titan girls. I asked them have they seen the movie yet, the live action one. Uh-huh. And they were they they were skittish. Mm. And I told them they, they, they should be, from what I've saw. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, live action from an anime is, like, it never tends to go well half the time. Uh, they, to me, they're usually better off having it inspired by anime versus trying to emulate it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, considering what I've seen with, done with Pacific Rim... And I think it might be another one similar that had um, similar to that. Mm-hmm. They might be able to pull off the mecha, right? Um, genre, right? Or um, the ones that doesn't inv- or the or the series that don't really involve special effects. The need for that many special effects. Mm-hmm. But when you go into having <sighs> The full, or maybe even the fantasy driven ones as long as it doesn't involve a whole lot of special stuff mm-hmm. but when when you, when you need a giant human that has to have a certain fa- a, the joker face right right and you have to apply physics that don't kill the actor but yet somewhat believable you're pushing it yeah yeah, you are. You are. It, it's it's very hard to transition from um, anime onto life uh, on the on the screen. Uh, <coughs> it's um it's it's a bit of a struggle because like on one side you're trying to appeal to like the general audience, but on the other side like you're trying to also appeal to like the um the hardcore crowd. So like anything that you get wrong per se is gonna get criticized, you know, one way or another. Um, mm-hmm. Unless you can, right. uh, unless you can combine it well, like an, an example would be just like any of the Marvel movies and how they manage to bring a lot from the comics, but at the same time appeal to a mass audience, and it's a huge yeah. success. Yeah, the Avengers and I want to say Thor, the Last Hope movie, and the, the first two Iron Man's, mm-hmm. they did very well. And Captain America. Yeah, definitely. 
Spider-Man was okay. <laughs> First one, great. Second one, alright. Third one, mm-mm. Mm -hmm. I hated that Venom. I, I, I hated that Venom. Right, right. And when they made Peter Parker try to go, oh, I'm being influenced by the dark side, it's just, no. No, he looks too goofy. I can't take him seriously. Mm -hmm. uh, when he's dancing across the street, and I'm like, "Why is he discoing?" I'm sorry, I can't take him seriously about the dark suit affecting his mind. No. <laughs> and then, and the bad thing is, they didn't really go into what this symbiote symbiote was. Right. Right. Yeah. It's um, yeah. It, it's uh, it wasn't a good good movie. I mean. Spider-Man 3 it just became a a more promotion of the comic than anything else. Um, it was pretty bad. So, but eh, eh, we're gonna do yeah. Hollywood. Yeah, yeah, Hollywood. Mm-hmm. Yeah. After seeing the, the live action Attack on Titan, I'm like, y'all can't complain about a Dragon, Dragon Ball Evolution no more. <laughs> y'all can't complain. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, y'all can make jokes about it in 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 your new season of anime and whatnot, but after that live after that attempt attack on Titan, no. Yeah, definitely. I mean, to me, the best part of that whole movie was the movie created character, um, Sanagi, or Sanagi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. The big, I mean, he flipped the Titan into a building. Mm -hmm. He. he Tossed him, and he's going around with a battle axe, doing more damage than the, the main characters from the actual thing. Yeah. I'm sorry, something's wrong here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, so, getting back to Chris the Coast Con. Um, yes. So, what were some of the standout moments for you during that convention? Ah, uh, yes. Hmm. The stand elements. Let's see. Um, one was watching the nerf battle. I mean, the war, the the, the fight, the outside battle with um, with um, Dragonair, mm -hmm. and when they were doing their demonstration on how they, how the battle is or the fights are done. Um. Another is when I was talking to Jack Strafer about um how he was giving me. How he was discussing with me about how TV has changed, mm -hmm. and he was giving me a history. Pin was giving me a history lesson about what about um certain profile people in Hollywood, in in the television business industry at this point in time when he was in it, and when Battlestar Galactica at that time was going on, and afterwards, mm. that was pretty interesting, especially how he explained how certain character, um, a loyal known character from. That became on the show. That went on the show of Dallas. How uh, he was close to not actually having a career, but the right people helped him. Right, right. And I was like, wow. <laughs> and it basically goes into who you know, and if you got good friends. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um. Let's see. Met some interesting authors. Mm, very creative ideas. Uh, let's see. Who else? My nephew tried to sweet talk the Pink Ranger. That was interesting. Wow, really? <laughs> like you're eight years old, but all right, I'm going to watch this. Wow, wow. <laughs> I'm, 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 <laughs> is, there, is, there, is there any photos or video of this? <laughs> no, no. It's just him being adorable, but she just ate it up. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. <laughs> she just ate it up. Man, all right. <laughs> I mean, I got pictures of him posing with the professional wrestlers and stuff, but I, I just pretty much kept them for my mom. Did you like Did you like Tim afterwards? Like, you did good. You did good. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I, don't like, I don't like this. Hope for you yet, kid. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's I great. mean, you had her giggling. So, I mean, you had her giggling, so and I'll give you props. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. It's awesome. And then prior to that, we had all went on the go karts. Oh, cool. Yeah, I was hanging in there though, but trying to make sure that you don't bump into the next person was a problem. So I ended up getting put, end up making sure not for that not to happen. Just like you know what, go ahead. 
I'll try to catch. I'll try to catch it the next go around. <laughs> <laughs> well, like the entire time you're in a go kart, like like the, any any moment of time where you're thinking like Mario Kart, like at any given time when you're doing that. <laughs> no, not at the moment. But it's funny that you should mention it, considering that <laughs> I, one of my friends that went with me, he he's been he's done with retro on us and bringing back the classic in, um, games from six from N sixty four. Mario Kart is one of them. <laughs> and I'm like, oh gosh. I mean, I'm fine playing it, but getting those controls, getting remembering those controls back again, because um, we like to play NBA Jam and, and um, Hang Time, mm -hmm. and like the controls are screwy, and the game ain't glitching. Right. And it's bad enough when the game has a history of cheating the player. Mm -hmm. That it glitched now too because of how old it is. Right, right. So that miss. <laughs> That's why I call it that miss. <laughs> Hilarious. Awesome. Um, in terms of like, out of your experience out of Crystal Coast Con, like, what do you feel, um, was the good, and what, what do you feel could have been improved upon, um, this year? Um, what was good to me, hmm, what was good is that they really, that, that how hard the staff work, and they really, really did their best to make sure people had a good time, and that the guests were well taken care of, and that certain rules in regarding the celebrity guests, and um, the things that fall in the, with them, and like especially the ones that I, that deal with um, SAG or the um, Screen Actors Guild or whatever, uh -huh. that rule certain rules involving them and flash photography and their images being used was f put and followed, or or certain guidelines are maintained because uh -huh. they have to be careful at certain because yeah in certain places certain events or certain celebrities because of the certain rules. They have to be. You have to be careful, and you have to get explicit permission, and that you have to show that. Oh, if you're working with this, you can take the photo, or if you, a fan, or here getting autographs or what, you have to follow these follow these rules, because it's to protect. It's going. It goes into a whole liability issues and stuff. And I thought the staff was really great and making sure that. That was well taken care of, as well as really providing an environment to for people to participate in. Um, what probably could be proved upon is trying to, um, like creating a more like for the because we had everything going on, but like Mac Daddy's is an area is but so big. Mm -hmm. That maybe if they had, had um, see, because it was a nice clear day, and during October, prior to the um, convention, it was kind of cold, but it was warmer. Right. That maybe that they could have more outside booths, if if uh, the vendors or people, if the vendors don't, if some vendors don't mind, or more outside events. Mm hmm to help um, ease, con ease um, congestion of the space. Right, right. Or, or um, open up other areas of the um, of Mac Daddy's that people can, are able to walk in, walk through, or, or that wouldn't be an issue. Mm -hmm. I see. Um, so the space wasn't really much utilized um, to its full potential. Uh, but this is like only its second year of, of, uh, of the convention being around? <laughs> no, it's not a second year. I believe it's closer. Is it a second year or third year? Hmm. Um, I want to say third. Okay. But the thing is, it's been growing. So I'm wondering if um that as it continues, will it uh, actually start adding on, like, for the, the events that they host, where they start adding, like, utilizing the extra space that they can, like, weather permitting, or um, if certain areas can be used, 
within um the, within the building that doesn't um won't provide us that won't cause a safety issue because right. I know like you can't really have people going further up the bowling lanes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it um when it when it comes to these conventions, especially early on, um like uh most conventions that are successful every year would would get more of attendance uh as it grows and generally the move would be or the initial stages of of a, a convention starting out is that if it gets bigger you know get more space if it gets bigger mm. than that you know move to a, a a bigger venue and so on and so on so um yeah i mean i i wouldn't be surprised if they start to use that that unused space for next year um I'm not quite sure if you know what the numbers were in terms of attendance wise, um, but uh, no, not really. But there are quite a bit of <laughs> few pe- there were a good deal of people there. Okay, cool. Yeah, it, it, I think that yeah, that, at second, third year, I think they're they're still trying to figure things out and trying to feel like like how how what's the, re- the what's the reaction to this convention and like what are some things that we need to do to increase its in size so i can definitely see that from, from that point of view but i can i can respect that too like i, I think it, like and i think in general like i think this convention will grow to bigger space it's just a natural progression of just like a convention growing each year um and from the sounds of things it sounds like this convention has been a success so far for the years it's been around Mm-hmm. cool awesome um, was there anything you wanted to point out uh, about Crystal Coast Con before we, before we move on to Anywave? Uh, <laughs> yes. Um, they have their Facebook page. Just type in Crystal Coast Con, and you'll be able to find it. And it's located in Cape Carteret on the coast mm-hmm. um, in North Carolina. And the venue that they use is called Mac Daddy's. I believe the lady that runs the, the actual... Um, Venue, I mean the actual place called Mac Daddy's is it's the same it's the same lady that directs Coast Con. Um, I call I know her as Miss Connie. Mm-hmm. Um, it's usually held in um, October and within the middle of it of the month, and it's a one day convention held on Saturdays. So it usually starts at. I want to say ten, and last to six. Okay, um, just out of curiosity, like how much was the price to get in for uh for the con? The price? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to remember what my friends paid. Um, I d- I want to say ten, but just to be sure. I should. I want to say either ten or eight, but um, I don't want to steer steer anybody wrong. Right, right. Oh, they were twenty five. <laughs> mistake. They were twenty five at the door. Okay, and assume that like if you if you uh, pre bid earlier, it'll be a cheaper price. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Um. Well, we look forward to for next year, and uh, from the sounds of the things, it looks like they are definitely working towards it. Um. To definitely expand that that space as well to really utilize it there. Uh. Okay. That's awesome. Good to know. Good to hear. Mm-hmm. All right. So tell me about everything. Anywave. How how was Anywave? Anywave was fun. <laughs> and the wave was very fun. Okay. I had a great time. Now this is the first convention I went solo. Ah, okay. How was that like? Um, I had to get up early, pick up. I had to get up early, pick up some stuff, and then head on down to Wilmington, North Carolina, hmm. which is also on the coast. It's a port city, and it was. Uh, hour and a half drive mm-hmm. and and this is one of the moments where North Carolina tends to have decide one side one area of the state 
tends to be a little chillier, but when you go further down south and east, it's, it gets warmer. Mm-hmm. And by the afternoon while I was there, I, I had to ditch. I had to go back to the car and put up my leather jacket. Oh, I see. Because one, it was it's already heavy, and two, it was getting hot. Mm. It was and at first I thought, well, because I'm in the building and we got a lot of a lot of convention goers here, so I'm like, okay, it's gonna get warm in here. But when I walk outside, I'm like, oh, okay, it's kind of mild. I mean, it's kind of warm out here too. So yeah, I had to um, put up the jacket. Yeah, it it, t- it tends to get pretty warm in conventions just because of the body heat. That's like. Of, of the of the mass amount of people that go, so yeah, mm-hmm. it was a good 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 idea on your point to leave the jacket. So <laughs> yeah, and then when we arrived there, when I arrived there, yeah, and it was still kind of early. They hadn't started the event. I arrived early enough before the events had started. Mm-hmm. So um, I took a few shots outside, and one of them includes um. A historical monument to this um, in the area. Um, it's a battleship mm. from World War, from World War Two. I see. Yeah. So basically, if you walk towards the um, the water edge where the convention overlooks, and and depending on which direction you're facing, in my case, if I turned left, you can see it. Nice. You can see the top of it. Awesome. Wow, that's really cool. The city, the city must have been great. Yeah, um, and not only that, you also had the people that own boats going by or like have a dock too hmm. in front of the convention as well. So that was that's that was pretty cool too, because like in one instance, a freighter, a freighter, I don't want to say freighter, but like um, a ship passed by, hmm. and that was pretty cool to watch because like last year we had helicopters going by. Huh, nice. I think they were from the Coast Guard, though. <laughs> That's really cool. So, um, that was cool in itself. So, when I um, was inside, I was meeting people. Um, was gotten, um, this time, I met more so cosplayers and vendors in some of the panels. Mm-hmm. And I got to see some, like, the demos and whatnot, like, um, there's a, a Shine Academy in Wilmington that was given a, a live demo there. I took pictures of them as they were, um, performing. So that was pretty interesting to see. Cool. Uh, let's see, what's next? There was an anime trivia going on. That was fun. It seems like <laughs> it seems like you can tell who watches the old who's been around longer when it comes to certain um um certain shows or whatnot and who will recognize them more or what shows have that recognize appeal because of how popular they were. Right, right, Cause, definitely. Because uh, stuff from like things from Sailor Boom, like a whole lot of people will get will, will answer it quickly or actually know what you're talking about. Versus, right, maybe Tenchi Muyo or, or Lovina. Right, I, 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 I would, I would say though, like, um, it's funny because like recently it seems like animes that were kind of were old back in the day are like kind of they're kind of going the game industry. And what I mean that by that way, I mean like they're like being remade for modern audiences. Yeah. Uh, as of like, like the new Lupin the third. Yeah. Like recently, like I think a year or two ago, was like a, like a re, a reboot of that series and uh, kind of reintroduced people to like what Lupin was. It still is. So, um, that, it, that's cool. I mean, like, I think that you would definitely get those type of people who are like, who's watched anime for a very, very long time. Um, and, ha- and particularly like, particular older ones. But it's some um, old anime is like, it's kind of universal. Like everybody knows what Sailor Moon is. Well, I sh- I would hope so. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> we'll say we'll say in twenty years we'll we'll see what happens. But yeah, um, yeah, definitely. Um, and also, you know, along with that, I realized that um, I guess I am getting older. <laughs> because yeah, the, the the scary truth 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. I realized that when um I answered when I answered certain questions about certain shows, and I was like, "Well, dang, I'm the only one here that actually watched it or know what it was." Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. <laughs> We're getting there, man. <laughs> yeah. The next thing I went to do was um one of the next things I did was. Uh, roam around the um, meet and greet with the vendors mm. and there were a lot of creative people there and a lot of um, uh, um, industrious people there too like real business savvy because some of them um, they're able they got they are able to uh, import this import stuff directly from Japan or companies over there over here right they right. do actually work, do business with them and mm-hmm. uh, one of them uh, is Red Sting Productions anime on stage they they actually go to Japan sometimes and add to bring back stuff products from there uh, another group another person was on um, now they had a whole section across one of the vendor areas from one end to the other up until the previous people that I just mentioned and they included um, action figures from Final, from Final Fantasy X Sick. Um, Canon mm-hmm. the uh, original Doji do, uh, do I, I, I know what you're talking about, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, 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 hard, it's hard to... Yeah, it's hard to pronounce, but I know exactly what you're talking about, yeah. Uh, self publishing work. <laughs> cool, awesome. Um, and they also had um, my actual snack foods and um, pastries from Japan, too. Sick. I know that was, it was cool. I just I, I couldn't bother to buy any at that time. Cause I had, um, I had um, I, I, my attention got called elsewhere when um, I saw Roroni Kenshin keychain and a few other nice. things that I saw that I wanted, like a miniature jazz from G1 Transformers. I had to get them. Sick. I had to get a Uar Hara plushie. Uh, nice. I know. I had. To, I had to. And then later on, there was um. A, a greatly, a really well done, um, uh, post, uh, um, paper size, I mean, like a, I won't say poster size, but letter size, um, artwork of um, One Punch Man. Nice. And it was the last one, so I went ahead and bought it. <laughs> That's awesome. And while me and my roommate were watching the anime, after that day I bought it, every new episode that came out. I will grab that poster and as the as the, as the theme song played and got to that one punch <laughs> that one punch part, I held up the poster. Nice. I had to do it. I, I, there is no shaming. <laughs> that that that's cool. I I like the fact you just embraced it. <laughs> yes, I have to. I mean, we. I mean, he even got the um the theme song. I mean, that the full theme song. So when he surprised me with it in the car one day. Uh huh. I just got into it and pumped my fist up in the air, even though I ended up hitting something in the car. <laughs> but, <laughs> hey, it's One Punch Man. When you got right. when you got an awesome opening like that, you got to feel it. Yep, you got to feel it. Mm-hmm. It's, you just got to raise your fist in the air and just start singing One Punch Man song. Mm-hmm. Yes. Just go just go nuts. <laughs> That's cool, though. I, I, I like that. That's, that's awesome. How much was the poster, by the way, out of curiosity? How much was the poster? Yeah. Hmm. Was it eight or ten? I want to. I I want to guess and say it's ten usually, unless unless you got it for like a, a discount. Um. I believe I. I don't think that one. I don't think I got it at a discount. 
Now the other merchandise I mentioned, I did get it for a discount because the lady gave it, um, bundled it for me. Nice, awesome. So yeah, I believe the One Punch Man poster was ten. Yeah, it was. And then um, I also got a. Um, I couldn't help myself. I had a. I wanted a bookmark girl of um. Major Kusanagi, mm-hmm. but she didn't have um, she didn't have anymore at the time. The lady I was talking to, because we actually got in a conversation about um, things that gamers get upset about when they do certain things to characters, mm-hmm. and it would involve Zero Suit Summons and Laura Croft. Ha, ha, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> Oh, it, so that we ended up having a long conversation. I mean, we ended up going in a conversation about that, mm-hmm. and because it started <laughs> off when we was talking about the prospects of a new, of a live action Ghost in the Shell movie. Ah, I see, I see. Which is happening? So, I mean, maybe it'll come out fine, but I just can't picture Scarlett Johansson playing the character. Uh, uh, you know what? I. I I'm I'm gonna you know give it benefit of the doubt because like I'm still in the mindset of like wait until it comes out and see what the performance is okay because like last time I mean like obviously we had a you know huge art cry for the latest Joker, um but then even prior to him when they put Heath Ledger in as Joker like everybody kind of doubted him it was like you know he can't play Joker why is he mm-hmm. you know been put a Joker and then like he showed up and did one hell of a performance in the movie so. Like I'm, I'm, I'm holding out, you know, that I think she'll do a good job, but we'll see. You know, I, I, I could be wrong. So, mm-hmm. not, not like Hollywood, you know, screwed up already with uh, comics, but you know, <laughs> it can happen. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I want. It just concerns me. I, I mean, you got people that are more cons- that are like uh, are on the like about the look too, but I knew they were gonna do that regardless. Which was a simple fact they wanted to pair some of the name out there to help sell the movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Even though many of the people that was a suggestion that the actress to play the role, she really could pull off the look easily. Yeah. But I'm willing to wait and see and watch. But the track record in, in the movie industry it, it disappoints me right now. <laughs> They don't give me. They don't really give me much to look forward, look forward to, considering the the past ones, the past mistakes and whatnot. Right, right, definitely. I mean, the Street Fighter movies. Uh, yeah. The Chun Li one could have been better, but for some strange reason, they. I mean, Michael Clark Duncan was an awesome Balrog, but. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We'll see. We'll definitely see how that goes. Um, but yeah. So, um, anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, so, uh, what were, what were, I mean, I'll ask this question again, like I did last, for the last convention, but what were some of the things you took out of Anywave? And it could be positive or negative, so. Okay. What I really took out of was, <laughs> and I'm, and I, and this applies to, um, not only it, but the other conventions I've been to so far, mm-hmm. or recent in recent year and within the recent two years, mm-hmm. uh, well, past two years, is that when when you got dedicated fans and people working together to bring this to other fans, mm-hmm. they really work hard. They mm-hmm. really, really work hard. Uh, and and I, I can see, like, with some of them, the, the, like, the fatigue setting in, and some of them with the stress and the frustration, trying to make sure everything goes work, but yet they don't let it get to them. They just keep going through there to make sure that everybody that enjoys the, any of the same thing, that, that has the same likes that they do, enjoy themselves mm-hmm. and I really appreciate them for that and not just for um, the staff at Anaway but also at other conventions that I've been to 
Right, definitely. It's working at a con at a convention, any convention for that matter, does take a lot of work, and mm -hmm. putting one together on top of that is a lot more harder work than I think people know out there. Um, some of these conventions, I mean, like this past year, we've seen a lot of conventions come and go. We've seen conventions had blew up um, this past year in terms of like how it was not organized as it should. Um, and it, it, it's a det detriment to like running a convention is not that easy at all because there's so many factors you gotta factor into when uh, running a convention. Um, so yeah, it, I, it's great to hear that. <coughs> I'm sorry. It's great to hear that, you know, that was one of the big things you took out of it. Uh, what what exactly kind of made you think that though? What was there a moment at any way that kind that happened in front of you that you know you saw or you or heard exactly what they're doing behind the scenes or what? What kind of made you um, come to that conclusion? Um, uh, let's see. Uh, like when security was trying to make sure that um some of the vendors were having their stuff taken care of. And things that like the equipment and whatnot being made sure that it was return, made sure that it was where it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. The guy in charge kept this stuff. I mean, kept himself um, cool about it, even though he, even though to me the, the person was really being edgy about it, that he was trying to help, but he kept his composure, which I really respect. And in other areas were seeing um, Adachi, the director, and Miss J, who I believe is the co-director, help um, um, guide through the other events such as the cosplay contest and making sure that the prizes were given out for those that won and the handling of other things by making sure certain things are cleared away for people to get through. Right. And and I really looked at it and saw how hard they worked and I mean they didn't give up or show that they were tired to when they were dealing with people. Mm, I see. So I believe it's more so how they kept themselves together and focused. Gotcha. Okay. Um, yeah, and, and, that, and that's really cool to see, and that's, that's really cool to definitely admire. Um, and that's really cool, and, you know, good stuff on, on the anyway, anyway staff. Um, Definitely, definitely. I, I think they're the unsung heroes of any anime convention, really. Um, but yeah, that, that's you know that's, that's awesome. Um, so now that you mentioned that, what <coughs> what are some things you feel like could um, uh, could have done better this year um, than the, they previous did? Um, let's see. Let's see. Um, I think they probably, if they were, if they're able for next year, since they're planning a two-day convention, mm -hmm. they have a second entry, uh, second entry point where, uh, mm -hmm. they help break up the line for, um, people to come in, and for tickets and whatnot. That way they all don't have to go to just one area. I mean, yeah, you want to keep them from wandering around and not just let anybody in that they're not supposed to be in or haven't paid to get in. But, yeah, at the same time, it's like, if we have open another booth for them to come into, like at um, stadiums where, like, you have ticket booths, like there's more than one, right. I would think that if they could um able to have another one set up to where they can help ease on the track, ease on the amount of people, um, ease back the line, because if you see in the gallery, that as soon as I finish getting it posted, and two of the pictures, you see that the line goes far outside, mm -hmm. and like this year, the weather was nice. 
but sometimes in this day, that ain't always the case, especially in December. Now, recently, it's been unusually warm. I mean, we've been hit with 70, 80 degree weather. When just last year around this time, it was freezing. Right. I see. So, it, I would think it will help out in that sense of turning out the traffic. I see. Was it just one booth doing the registration? There wasn't another booth that was um, helping out? or um, Where they were at is a large circular um, table, a bar mm -hmm. desk. And you have mm -hmm. more than one person working there, but mm -hmm. which funnels all the traffic to them before anybody can go anywhere else. But being that, like last year, like they have been getting bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. After a while, you don't. I I will. You don't really want that long. That line getting very very long and wrapping around outside in the, at the waterfront. So, right. So, I would, I would, my suggestion would, would be opening another, like another, like a, having a, a similar spot open up to help alleviate the flow, to help turn out, um, turn, to help the turnover with the line. Yeah, definitely. And just one thing I think that, um, I wouldn't say is it's a deal breaker, or I want don't want to say like annoys people but like when it comes to registration for lines um that is something that i think one of the key areas a convention should focus on because um there's definitely a moment for me um i can't remember what year it was as well it's been a couple of years ago but basically when we, uh, there was a time at fanime that i went to and fanime is, is the fourth biggest convention in the u.s uh and it's, it is in san jose every year uh one of the issues happened where they set up the registration in another building, um, but the lines were so long, like literally, like people were waiting there five to six hours in a line just to get their badge for the convention. And I remember I had to do, I had, I had to go to the line. Oh, press! I already got a badge, but I had to get a a one day badge if I wanted to sell anything in the swap mm -hmm. room. And I waited for like around three or four hours in the line just to get. A one day badge um, it was ridiculous and, it, and people were like really furious with what happened um, so then you know later on the year after they had somebody from anime expo come up and help them like organize like look this is how you you know do this like this is how you organize how to get people signed up badge ready and ready to go and whatever system they had last year or last time did not work um, also, because they're understaffed as well, that's another reason too. But um, yeah, uh, take less. You know, there's definitely something to be learned there. And like, anyway, like I, there's if there if definitely don't make it a thing. If it's like you know, first if it happens once, like you know, one time out of like you know, I don't know how many years. Anyway, has been around. Oh, or it's been around. Been around. I want to say close to seven. <laughs> Oh wow! Okay. But um, it's been but the recent couple of years, last few years, has been getting bigger, because when it first started off, it was a film festival. Right. Gotcha. But um, it's just that when I noticed when I looked at it, the line wasn't very long, but at the same time, it made me remember back to the first convention I went to, and I thought about it because the first convention I went to was on um, the Middle Tennessee Co Anime Convention. And right, this is right. before I even met you guys. Mm -hmm. And the lines were long there too, going up the block. And I said, now when I was walking up to um, the anime this year, and I noticed how the line was, I mean, it was still early though, but the line was getting long, but not too long. I was saying to myself, hmm. But probably, if they get a large turnout this year, they probably going to have to invest in getting something to help <laughs> chop down the, the size of the line. Right. Because right. I want them to get bigger, but at the same time, I want them to be able to be efficient in, in, in when they, as they grow. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, yeah, it, it's definitely like... Uh, I mean, like it definitely does hurt a con, whether a convention, 
wants to believe it or not. Um, and th- people, those people will remember next to, you know, following year if it's the same case. But, you know, if it's like a once, like if it happens like maybe once, you know, a year, then, you know, or, or what I like at it like 10 or 15 years, then it's fine. Um, but it's definitely, definitely to definitely look out for. I mean, another case I would say is look at Anime Expo. Anime Expo this past year was another case where people were waiting outside. And, and in that instance, people were wait, waiting outside. Um, in the heat on day zero to get their badge, and um, uh, they was not not all of them got their badge on that day because of the long, long lines. Um, not to mention the heat exhaustion that some of the people were dealing with. They were giving out waters, yes, but like even still, even still, um, there were uh, at least to be a tent or something to kind of cover the people in line. So like, there's definitely has been issues, and like it, it like no anime convention or any convention is. Um, uh, pr- bulletproof when it comes to to these uh to these causes to these incidents, so yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, you said it happened at an amazement. Anime. Oh, anime expo. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's definitely a, a problem that no convention is uh is, is foolproof on at least not yet. The one day, the day we every convention's like that, where like there's no lines. Oh man, that'd be the dream. That'd be heaven. Yeah, I mean, I, I that, that's something just, <laughs> just going for, for over stretching. I'm just like, you know what? I want you guys to be successful, successful as much as possible, and because mm-hmm. y'all got a good thing going on, and I will hate for anything to interrupt it. It's, right. Yeah, uh, I mean, if there's ways that you can. Like make it easier and ease certain things that can prevent them from becoming problems as you grow. Go for it. Mm-hmm. Definitely, definitely. Um, in terms of like cosplay, what particular cosplay stood out to you at anyway? Which one particular stood out to me? Yeah. Um, let's see. We had the Jedi and the Stormtrooper. Um, we had a female Cyclops. She was she looked pretty good. We had Elma Frost. Um, she actually gave me her card. Oh, nice. Yeah, awesome. I'll I'll put that in soon. Um, we had uh, we had Snake. He was there, and I actually got he had his box with him, so I actually got him putting the box on in the box and then popping out of it. I mean, I had to do it. <laughs> Uh, nice. <laughs> we had a Doctor Stein. He kind of photobombed me a couple, um, twice. So I went ahead and got him by himself. <laughs> nice. Uh, let's see. Who else? Oh, well, we had a couple of Sailor Scouts. They were lovely. Um, and you'll see their pictures soon. Um, Miss Adachi was a good Chun Li. Sick. Yeah. She, she was a she was a, she was great at it. Um. Who else? Who else was out? Um, let's see. There was a rogue, but I missed her. And I'm like, Dad, when I got the Cyclops, I didn't get rogue. Um, <laughs> we had Maka, and um, I want to believe it's Soul, but I, I don't think it is. I believe it's Black Star that was with her this this year. Because last year, I believe she had sold with it. Yeah, no, never mind. Yeah, that's my kind of black star. Nice. Awesome. And um, we had Misa. We had Misa Mane. She, she was nice. Mm-hmm. And we had from Kill a Kill. Um, Ryota, um, Her friend and the girl that killed her dad. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And I believe, I want to say the dude that was the disciplinarian guy was there, but I don't think that was his cosplay. I believe it was Germany from Italia that was just hanging out with Ah, I see. But either way, he he was, I believe he was supposed to be in Germany because of how his um, uniform was. So he was hanging out with the ladies, as Germany should. Right, right, of course. (laughs) But um, we had a samurai that won. The, um, I believe he was supposed to be in Samurai Jack. He won the um, melee tournament from Smash Brothers. Ha! Cool. Awesome. 
That was inter- that was fun to see. Um, one of the vendors, they were um, a Team Rocket couple. That was fun. And we had the Joker and Death. Or the Grim Reaper, but yeah. Sick. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Uh, we had a, a bunch of awesome people dressed in great cosplays and whatnot. They, it was fun to watch. And talk to some of them too. Like, the lady that was on Death or the Grim Reaper, she was telling me how long it was t- it took her to actually do some of the, the, get the fabric together for what she wanted. And um, the skull mask underneath her um, veil. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. And I want to say she was wearing a skull mask under there. Well, yeah, because her voice was somewhat muffled by it. Mm-hmm. But uh, she told me it took a, quite a couple of hours to do it, get it done. Then uh, we had a guy that was on the panel. Um, he will. He was like the elf from um, the Hobbit. I want to say he was the ancestor of the one that you see in the original Lord of the Rings trilogy, or the leader. Right, right. I believe that's how he. I believe that's what he explained to me, and he. Um, they got one of the, the head security guy. He 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 gets involved in um, what I was talking about earlier with the LARPers, um, with um when they host battles with each other with the Nerf weapons. Right. He was talking about how much he would love to have him on his team because of how tall he was. They just give him a pike <laughs> or a spear and just have him reach over and down. That's and, hilarious. I know. He, he he can just stand back and end ever and end the match right there. You know, mm. that was cool. Wow, that's awesome. That's pretty sick and hilarious at the same time. Um, cool, awesome. Um, so I would say, and and, and I think and you already said this already, but like overall thoughts on any wave. Overall thoughts. I enjoyed myself. It was they, they surprised me with, um, with who with um the events that they had this year. The cosplayers outdid themselves. Many of them did. The vendors came came out and had products that I was not expecting to see, and many more of them did. And I'll be showing some of them later, and I get the chance. And I'm looking forward to next year since they intend to make it a two-day event. So if they do, I would like to see what they have in store or who they can have come and visit again. Because I believe, because this past year they had um, they had a voice actress from. I want to say, ah, I think it was Rose Actress. What's her name again? She, she was on, I believe, yeah, she was on a comedy got killed. Hmm. And, if I'm not mistaken, she, ah, I'm sorry. Um, she was one of the ones I missed. And, and that's another thing. Trying to, I know it's, I know it's, a, it's a, an impossible thing, but trying to see everything about a convention is very really tiresome. <laughs> like trying to be everywhere and cover everything, because it's like, yeah, uh, what do I focus on? Right, right, definitely. I mean, I guess kind of some things we've run into as well over here in California. Um, when it comes to the rest of of MSP. Um, but you know, that's just kind of the way that we live or the work we do. So mm. I know that feeling all too well. Yeah, no, but <laughs> I mean, there's a good chance you might have somebody there helping you. <laughs> in my case, yeah. Unless you move to California, you know, then no, that's a, 
Yeah, that would be cool. But, uh, yeah, I don't think that's going to happen for a bit. For a bit. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, well, I want to thank you for taking your time out, out of your day to talk to me and tell everybody at home how your experience was at Annie Wave and at Crystal Coast Con. Mm -hmm. um, before we go, where can they find you on the Internet? On the Internet? Uh, I haven't been really using anything recently. Um, I do put on my, my business or um, work-related email on, on the MSP site. Um, usually at the end of the, uh, whatever I post for immediate contacts, um, it's written at the end of uh, whatever I post. So in this case, the galleries that are coming up, you will see my email contact if you have any questions. Um, I also use Google Plus, uh, Ryu, Ryu Zaki. Um and that's a death note reference too, so... <laughs> <laughs> awesome good stuff um cool awesome uh you can follow me personally on twitter at the fifth of naruto you can follow the work that me and chris do on our website at missionstarpodcast.com uh you can listen to this podcast on the site or if you listen to on itunes or on stitcher or both on itunes and stitcher um as well so definitely check it out on the podcast feeds um so yeah, again, it's 2016, a new year for MSP, and it's going to be a lot of conventions on the rise, um, and we're definitely going to be back in the, I say back in the saddle, but like back in the grind of things when it comes to convention coverage uh, this coming year. So with that, happy new year, have a happy holidays, and we will see you guys next